Good morning all. Today we will explain apostrophe to the ocean by Lord Harriet. Our main goal today is to analyze the poem. So we would like to get a general feeling of the whole poem and also we would like to determine the meaning of unknown words and phrases mentioned in the poem, especially the archaic language. So in order to start, Lord Pyrens in apostrophe to the ocean, it is a, an example or it is a selection from his longer narrative poem, Clyde Harold's Pilgrimage, which was printed between 1812 and 1818. The meaning of the word apostrophe to the ocean, it means that the poet himself is addressing or talking to the ocean like he is a live person. So, in this selection or excerpt, the speaker addresses his speech to the ocean, which is an apostrophe. That is the meaning of apostrophe. He braided the ocean's natural power. The, the speaker then compared the power of the ocean to the action and accomplishments of humans. So, he will make a comparison between the accomplishments of the ocean uh, compared to the accomplishments of humans. Uh, the excerpt ends with the speaker describing the love and fear that he has always had for the ocean. He will explain in the last stanza how he reveres and pay respect for the ocean and also fears it. Moving to the next slide, we would like to understand what is the difference between apostrophe and personification. They are very interrelated expression. Let's look at the apostrophe. We said that apostrophe is a figure of a speech in which a speaker directly addresses a person who is dead or not physically present, a personified object or non-human thing, or an abstract idea. In this case, the poet uses example. Let's look at this example. O oh moon, you shine so beautifully against the night sky. So, if he's talking directly to the moon, it is apostrophe. But, in the other example, personification, he would give the moon human qualities, like the moon smiles down from the night sky. So, if we give inanimate objects, human qualities, or human characteristics. That means personification. So the slight difference between apostrophe and personification, that the first one, you address or talk to an object or non-human thing. The second one, which is personification, it means you give a non-human thing like human qualities. Okay. So let's move to the poem and get a general feeling of the lines and the paraphrase. I will not ask you in the exam to paraphrase like line by line, but I would like to check your understanding that you can understand the whole meaning of the poem. So if you look at your books on page 626 and read silently, and to try to understand first what does he mean, the poet, with the first nine lines. So, the poet means there is a music and a pleasure along the shore of the ocean that is different from anywhere else. I have to mingle with the nature and reveal the powerful spirit of the ocean. So, the poet is trying to tell us that the ocean get its own powerful spirit. That is, you can only sense and feel when you are close to the ocean. That's from line one to line nine. Okay, moving on to second stanza. If you read silently from line 10 till line 17.
In the second stanza, the poet is trying to tell us that man has destroyed nature and to try to control it by all means. Hiram acknowledges activities of humans such as deforestation and mining to create cities to do indeed a change in the shape and workings of the earth. But he notes that nothing a man has built can yet conquer the sea. So he is telling us no matter or how advanced the society and the man can build and go on with his building and achieving, he can't like beat the powerful sea or ocean. I would like you now to read from line 19 till 27. In these lines, the poet is trying to tell us man can step on the realm of the ocean, while man can use his despicable power to ruin everything else. So he's trying to tell us that the ocean is like enclosed territory for the man, and he can't ruin anything with that powerful spirit or nature. He's telling us also he owned the ocean But the ocean got a mighty power that can control man himself, rotating him from his pro protected areas to the limit of the sky, like the ocean can flip him over. Then man can go with his little hope of controlling the ocean and will leave, depart the ocean where he feels lonely, close to a port or a bay. That's from line 19 to 27. Now I would like you to read silently from line 28 till 36. In these lines, he's trying to tell us even the weapons that shake nations and destroy cities used by human are toys in the hand of the ocean. They would melt in the waves of the ocean like the way the Armada's ship Bride was ruined, defeated by the English in 1588. Then I would like you to look at line 37 till 54. In these lines, the poet is trying to tell us that the speaker that or the speaker said that past empires are subject to the ravages of time. But the ocean is unchangeable. The ocean can destroy everything in its path, including human endeavors to destroy it. So the ocean will stand against all attempts to destroy it or ruin it. The last stanza, which I would like you to look very closely, it is the most important one. That's from line 55 to line 64. The last one is telling us that the ocean is a force of nature that transcends or change any individual. Seen in this way, the ocean itself becomes the natural embodiment of the poet's passion for life. Like the ocean is a natural power that inspires the passion for life of the poet. The image of the poet 
born like bubbles on the wave is one anyone who has been to the beach can understand. The reality of the power of the ocean is undeniable and obvious, as is the poet's love for the water. So he can remember his memories when he was a child. The poet is as it, as it were a child of the ocean. So the poet is trying to tell us the ocean is like his parents. The fear it causes is pleasing because the poet trust the ocean like he would like he would be his parent but also because as it's a child the limitless power of the ocean will also somehow be his inheritance so he would inherit the magical power of the ocean in his blood so this is the end of the paraphrase of the poem and we can look at the after reading comprehension check questions and I added two more questions to it. I would like you to work on your own on these questions after listening to the video and not try to attempt the answer right away. Like whom or what does the speaker address? address in this poem that's very clear according to the speaker how is humankind's relationship with the ocean different from its relationship with the land we mentioned this as well so go through the questions try to answer them on your own send it to your teacher when you are done and that's it for today thank you